side. mound Jeremy talked about in his book. Don't come any closer. I'm armed. Get that thing out of my face. Who are you? What are you doing here? I'm just a detective trying to find something called Tarawea. You're after Jeremy too? Why? I'm working for his niece. She wants to make sure he's alright. He might be unharmed, but far from alright. He's a curse upon DeSetto. Oh, here we go again. Quiet! It was a bust. The or
Detective Conby had a hard time understanding what had happened. As his pride faded, Detective Conby was left with a feeling of unease. He had successfully managed to enter a whole new world. How could this be? And why did he accept this so readily? One thing was clear. There were no answers to be found by standing around questioning reality. Knowing only what he read in the commonplace book, Conby headed off to look for Jeremy in the hateful mound. It was a bust. The oil rig and the hateful mound led him nowhere closer to finding Jeremy. Conby was sure he had struck gold when he found Jeremy's bag, but it was just a trap set by Lottie, another of DeSetto's orderlies. Things got out of hand real quick, but somehow Conby managed to find his way back to DeSetto, none the wiser. At least it was one item off his list. Now he had to figure out what to do with the boiler. Reflections on the Power of the Verb in Certain Texts by Juan Luis Jorge To act is in itself divine. Even the slightest movement of our hand is evidence of our soul in motion. Yet our free will is so easily overwhelmed by the dullness of everyday life. Our actions become rote and rigid in spite of luxury and comfort. True divinity is found in the choice of leaving the stage where we all perform. People who discover this freedom unexpectedly will be struck by the terror of this revelation and become paralyzed, or worse, turn to suicide. However, if you are able to weather that storm, you will discover that there is a divine path beyond that fear. There is a chance to dismount your destiny and make something new, something that hasn't been planned for or predestined. There is difficulty in explaining this type of acting, as it transcends our everyday choices. This isn't some banal decision choosing one career over the other, or even who I should marry. Leaving the stage, no matter how, isn't a matter of course correction. It's a rejection of the story that the creator is telling. Wedge shut. It worked. What's this? The Barlow Lens. Instructions. To double the magnification of your telescope, simply fit this Barlow Lens to your instrument. Then operate the fine tuners to adjust the distance between your lenses. This is easily done while looking through your eyepiece. Simply search for a position where your picture is clear and appears flat. When correctly tuned, your telescope should present a clear picture with magnificent magnification. Now we're talking.
wedged shut. It worked. Detective Conby, how good of you to come. Let me pour you a drink. What happened here? This place looks like it was hit by a bomb. <laughs> Welcome to the madhouse, Detective. Thanks. Did the ceiling just collapse? I heard it was something in the attic. Something that was supposed to happen, but didn't. How that could have such consequences is beyond me. The truth is, I don't know why the room looks like this. But I bet your friend Jeremy does. You know where I could find him? Oh, somewhere in his past, I suppose. He keeps going on about that mysterious dark man. I think he is hiding from him. Or maybe he's with him. I can't really keep up. I don't worry much. Take a look around this room. You may think it looks spectacularly devastated, but I just think it's finally found its stride. <laughs> it fits perfectly with the state of this place and its... loonies. The same goes for the nonsense with Jeremy. In my eyes, we finally managed to match the wild ride inside all of us. Well, I'm happy you find the evening so harmonious. I uh, hope you don't mind me setting things right. Jeremy's business, that is. This room looks beyond my capabilities. Good luck, detective. Hope to see you again soon. Yeah, evening, miss. Ruth seemed like... Can I get some more of that whiskey? Go ahead, detective. I don't think I can stomach any more anyway. Am I bothering you? On the contrary, detective. I enjoy watching professionals at work. Well, I better get going. Bye now, detective. Don't take any wooden nickels.
As the world moved into the new decade, America was spiraling into a maelstrom of debt, drought, and death. It was called the Great Depression and ruined many families. It was a fitting name, for poverty also breeds madness through desperation. Jeremy was of course no such victim, for he already witnessed the darkness within. He knew the shadow that stood on his threshold very well. It wasn't new. It was something that had always been with him. more of that aggressive rot. On the commonplace of evil, there lies virtue and stark irreverence, careless thoughts of luminous indifference. But blame not the beast we once were, which science so often wished to refer. Not the wicked full of sin, it is you who stand and grin. All our good intentions aside, whereupon we build our pride. Sunless solitude, follow not this corrupting light. Prophets of confidence always crashes out of sight. Hear me, for we all bear this mark. Thus we must remain. Alone in the dark. The lone and the lost walk a land of fear. When there is nothing you recognize, or no one to trust, you prepare for the worst. Something is coming, and you best be ready. Take the gun in the parlor. Give them hell. Ruth seemed like a handful. Her talk about Jeremy and the Dark Man made it sound like she might know something of importance. But ultimately, it felt like a dead end. Huh.
There's something missing. Must be that. Don't you worry, Grace. Go play your game, bleat and bellow with the others. I won't be jealous. There will be more masquerades. However, I would love it if you would finish my mask for the feast. With love, Ruth. Kid's room. Why does she seem so familiar? out there you drawing something nothing special I'm just bored do I know you from somewhere I remember you mr. Conby from where don't touch that Cassandra wouldn't like it she wouldn't like it at all do you know where she is I'd rather not talk about it it makes me upset Besides, she'll be back after the Feast of St. John. You think? Yep. It's all on the page, Mr. Conby. And many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life, and some to shame and everlasting contempt. All right. I'm gonna go now, if that's okay. I don't like to stay too long in the same place. Mr. McCoffee might find me. Hey. Is he mean to you? Not everyone needs to be saved, Mr. Conby. You should know that by now. Guiding me to do something, but what? So this is where Cassandra Beauregard ended up. For some reason, I... if I find the full set of bottles, then maybe I can make something out of the. Stains of rot. Miss Beauregard, I picked up your medicine at the post office today. As you understand, it needs to be administered by the orderlies for your safety. I have put the box in Lottie's room for now, and I'm sure she will find you as soon as possible. Mr. Waits.
The rot made the shape of a snake. There must be something important to find here. Maybe it has something to do with the numbers on the labels. Another one of those strange padlocks. The Why did that girl look so familiar? Detective Combi just couldn't quite remember. His last few years were clouded by a drunken haze. A haze which now had turned almost opaque. Considering their shared past, Grace had every right to feel slighted, but it wasn't in her nature. She was amused. The medicine bottles had stains of rot on the labels, suggesting some greater shape. They just needed to be put in the right order. But for what purpose? Every night the dark Will I need to remember how to get them out again? They are locked up for good reason. I am sure she is still able to whisper the answer in the ears of the wrong people. But not for long. I will see her burn soon enough. That black goat will be sacrificed to put an end to it all. Then it will all be over. No more Derseto, and sadly, no Astarte. Those good... <sighs> another piece of broken plate.
You know, Mr. Waits, I saw a piece of the plate that Liza broke. I think she's been hiding them. She's not very good at it. She just chucked it into the little room with all the tools behind the boiler. I left it there. I didn't want to embarrass her by picking it up while she was looking. We went upstairs instead and played backgammon. I let her win, because she's so unhappy. The piece looked like the one on display in Cassandra's room. You know about that one already, right? Or is your eyesight really that fuzzy? I hope you don't feel bad about your glasses. You only look stupid when you squint. Maybe if you had more eyes, you would see these things. I wish you had all the eyes you needed. Your best and favorite guest, Grace. It's another playful talisman. Like the other one, it's broken and missing some pieces. There's something missing. It worked. Jeremy?
Conby didn't know what to make of. The medicine bottles had stained. Conby didn't know what to make of the grotesque vision of the dead clerk. Was he dead, or was it all fiction? Reflect.
Every night. Black glass is showing another room. Must be a way to another one of Jeremy's memories. I knew it would work. I'm getting good at this, Carnby. I know I'm too good at this. Hartwood's family crypt. Emily's family must have deeper roots in New Orleans than I thought. I figured she was a Yankee like me. this. Now what do we got here? <sighs> got it. Jeremy sketched this chapel in his book, so it must be important. Looks like I'll need more medallions to open it, though. I don't think I have everything I need. <laughs> 